Yo, what is up, YouTube? James Beck here, and welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Backtrack Battles. Today, we are used, still using the Empoleon team with Empoleon, Charizard, Sylveon, Landris, Varian, Zapdos, and Tapabulu. Let us get started. But if you haven't seen the last episode, I highly recommend go check it out. It was a pretty crazy one, and yeah, this team has been really, really fun. I'm really glad I picked this for the first team. Because it's been so much fun actually just playing. It's been really fun just playing. And yeah, Empoleon has been doing a lot of work. Sylvian's finally been able to do some work. Razor back for the United States, 1637. Rating will be our first opponent today. Ah, it's the QR code team, but no QR code. Interesting. <laughs> so Kangaskhan, Naganado, Landris Varian, Heatran, Tapufini, and Cresselia. We faced this team multiple times. However, the problem is there's no QR code, so we can't guarantee the sets now, which is a little bit unfortunate. So, what I normally love this was Empoleon, Landorus, Farian, a bunch. So, I'm going to keep doing that. I feel like I don't see a reason to stop with Tapu Bulu Charizard X in the back. Don't see a really reason to stop using this combination. Empoleon's just been doing so good against these kinds of teams. And can definitely put in a lot of work. Uh, I guess maybe if like... Maybe if you know I'm leading this, maybe I should stop leading this. It's been effective though, especially against players who probably just haven't seen like what I lead against this, but probably the most effective lead against this kind of lead would be like Heatran plus Landris, which would actually be really annoying for this lead to handle, but we'll see here because like I would probably have to force switch out my Empoleon, but I don't like taking a Tectonic Rage here. Actually, no, then I could go in Charizard, so it's fine. So... Empoleon plus Landis Varian will take the lead as it's going to be Kangaskhan and Naganado. Interesting. So I get Intimidate off into the Kangaskhan as well as the Naganado. Which is solid here. HP Ice is definitely a possibility. Draco Meteor is definitely a possibility as well. I wouldn't expect Sludge Bomb into the Landris slot. I could see Ice Punch maybe from the Kangaskhan. Hidden Power Ice from the Naganado. I could see Fake Out Tailwind as an option. I could see Go Straight for the Low Kick potentially. There are a lot of possible options for my opponent here. However, Icy Wind is a very safe play here in my opinion. And going out hard into Tapu Bulu like I normally do seems pretty solid here. Unless my opponent does read this. But I don't think you Sludge Bomb turn one. So we'll see what my opponent does here. If you Fake Out Sludge Bomb. Amazing. I'm not sure if you would have expected this, but who knows? We'll see here. It's gonna be Kangaskhan Mega Evolving. And yes, I do know that Tapu Bulu will take a lot of damage from a Hidden Power Ice, but it shouldn't be doing too much. And getting Grassy Terrain from Polyon is also really nice. So Knocking Out is actually gonna protect, which is fine here. So I'm guessing no fake out then. Which is surprising because I get Tectonic Rage. Ice Punch is gonna come out from Kangaskhan, which is kind of what I expected here. Not doing much at all. That did nothing. So again, I see wind off into the Kangaskhan as well as the Nag... Well, not the Naganado because it protected, but that's still a good turn for me regardless because I get the Kangaskhan speed to fall. Yeah, that's not a bad turn for me at all. And now I can go for another Icy Wind here and I think I could protect... The problem is like... Uh, okay, now I'm kind of pinned with Tapu Bulu because of Ice Punch. It is Ice Punch Kangaskhan, like I did uh, mention it was a possibility. I could go on the Landers on the Sludge Bomb, and I feel like I'd rather do that play because I feel like if I protect there, it's like really obvious I'd be forced to switch in the Landers then. So I could definitely see him going into Heatran. Oh, that works. I'll take that. I don't know what Naganado's going to do. I'm guessing Tailwind? Maybe doesn't carry Tailwind, uh, hopefully. I hope you don't HP Ice that slot. As I will get my Landis' Intimidate here in the game, and we'll see what my opponent goes for. It's going to be Sludge Bomb. Okay, that's perfect, because I got uh, my Landis in a really solid position if I do connect the Icy Wind. It's Life Orb Naganado. That's good to confirm here. As I will get an Icy Wind off into the Naganado and the Heatran. So both of these Pokemon are going to be taking a bit of a speed decrease here. And I don't see a reason not to just keep going for Icy Wind, to be honest, because of the fact hitting Icy Wind is a no-drawback play. I get maybe the only switch in my opponent really has for a Tectonic Rage would be the Landis Varian. But Landis Varian doesn't like taking a Icy Wind very well. So I'll go for a Tectonic Rage, and I think I'll target down the Naganado slot because Heatran would most likely be switching out. But it's actually going to be Naganado switching out into Kangaskhan, which I don't mind because getting rid of that Kangaskhan is a huge threat to my team. So, oh, Heatran's also going to switch out Landris? 
Nice. So I get an Icy Wind and takes Hound Rage. That's probably one of the most beautiful turns I could have asked for. I get chip damage onto this Landris, which is absolutely huge here. Like, getting that chip damage is really huge. And that Icy Wind off, I'll gladly take this turn. Even if it's a minus one Tectonic Rage, it's a lot of damage coming out onto my opponent. So I do not mind this. Tectonic Rage is going to come out from my Landis Varian, which will surround itself with its Z power. Here comes the Tectonic Rage. And how much is this going to do to King's Gun at minus one? I would imagine 70%. 60, maybe 70, depending on how bulky it is. It's probably fast Kangaskhan, I would imagine, if it has Ice Punch. Yep, about that round. And Icy Wind comes out and hits the Landis variant as well as the Kangaskhan for some good damage. And that's really solid for me. Really solid for me. Unfortunately, I feel like Kangaskhan will be able to survive the U-turn thanks to the grassy terrain, but I guess it's not too bad still. I don't need Tapu Bulu in this game. Like, Tapu Bulu actually doesn't really do much. So I'll switch into Tapu Bulu here because I'd rather keep Tapu Bulu. Uh, I'd rather sack Tapu Bulu than lose Empoleon to a Tectonic Rage. And I'll U-turn to Kangaskhan. One, I get to confirm what item Landris might potentially be. Two, I get to avoid Ice Punch. So we'll see here. It's going to be Fake Out coming out. Oh, I forgot Fake Out was an option, actually. But it's going to target down the Empoleon slots. I do not mind that. <laughs> I actually forgot about Fake Out. U-Turn's going to come out into the Landers. I mean, Kangaskhan. Almost pick up the Knockout. It doesn't look like it's Scarf Landers. Uh, does he Rock Slide here? I don't think he Rock Slide. I'm going to go Charizard. I don't really need Charizard much in this game anyway. Like, Charizard really doesn't do much. Unless I get a Dragon Ants up and can hit Naginato. It's Super Power coming out. Ooh. Into doubling into that slot. Excellent. Excellent. It's one of the best turns I probably could have asked for, to be honest. That's honestly one of the best turns I could have asked for, to be honest. And I will gladly sack Tapu Bulu here. So I guess I'll go for the Wood Hammer into the Kangaskhan slot. I could see Kangas. Uh, actually, I'd rather Wood Hammer to Landris. Like, I could see. Landorus going for U-turn if it isn't Scarf or Bandit. It didn't look like Bandit damage. Could be Scarf. But I'm going to Wood Hammer to Landorus slot. And I think I'm going to set up a Dragon Dance. Mega Ball Dragon Dance. Because I'll definitely be able to eat these attacks from my opponent. And Landorus is going to switch out. So it's not U-turn most likely. And Heatran's going to come out. Okay. Which is fine because Heatran really can't do much to me anyway. And I don't really mind this because getting a free switch. Like I'm hoping my opponent targets down the uh, Tapu Bulu. But it's probably going to be my Kangaskhan, I would imagine. I mean, my Charizard, I would imagine. I do get a Dragon Dance up. Let's see if Tapu Bulu is faster than that a Kangaskhan. That would be nice, but I don't think it is. Double Edge is going to come out. But it's just going to knock itself out to recoil anyway. So that's that's acceptable here. That did a lot more damage than I thought. Oh, right. It's not intimidating. <laughs> that, that kind of explains it. But I knew that I would live double edge no matter what anyway. What, unless it was crit. Wood Hammer was going to come out into Heatran. That does a lot of damage in Grassy Terrain. That was four times resist. And it did like a little bit over 20%. That's actually kind of insane. Grassy Terrain disappears from the battlefield. This is actually pretty good. I'm not sure if I want to keep the terrain on. I don't know if I want to conserve terrain now. Uh, Landers is going to come back out, which is fine. Naganado is my opponent's last Pokemon. I literally win with Empoleon at this point if I get rid of Landers. So I do kind of just want Dragon Claw and Wood Hammer that slot. If it's Scarf Landers, it has to be Jolly. So, yeah. We will be able to get Dragon Claw. This is at neutral, so should be able to pick up the knockout on the Landers. Yep. Nice. And Heat Wave or Earth Power could be coming out from this Heat Sham, but either way, I'll be able to get a free switch to Empoleon, which is really solid for me here. As uh, Substitute is going to be set up. Okay, you can set up a sub, but you still can't be my Heat Sham. I mean, my Empoleon in the back at this rate. Nagana is probably going to be coming out here. Yep. I guess the question with Naganado is do you have Protect? If you have, if you have Protect, you go for it this turn. You saw it go for the. Uh. I think go for turn one. Did it go for protect? I think it did. He went for protect or sludge bomb. I did land. No, he went for protect. Yeah. He either went for protect or switched out, I think. So. I'm going to wood hammer the Naginata slot. And I guess I'll just. Actually, wood hammer the Naginata doesn't accomplish anything. I'd rather wood hammer Heatran and protect here. I'm pretty sure Naginata, if it has protect, is forced to protect. Then. 
Otherwise, he goes for Tailwind. But again, like, Empoleon's still looking really solid in this game, no matter what. Like, my opponent doesn't have a good way to stop it. And Naganada does reveal to protect here. So, scouting for that protect because Heat Transpell is likely going to attack into the Charizard. Not sure if it's going to be with a Heat Wave or Earth Power. I kind of want to assume it's Earth Power at this point. Uh, does my Heat Tran. Does the Heat Tran on top of Blue Speed Tie? Yes, Earth Power and the Charizard. Nice. Now my opponent has to rely on a double, and it's still kind of unreliable here. So I'll go for Dragon Claw into Naginato and Wood Hammer. I also break the Heatron sub potentially. Uh, my opponent gets to double protect. I'm not really too minding that. Again, my Empoleon can come in and just click Ice Me on Naginato, and it should pick up the knockout no matter what. And once I get rid of the Naginato, uh, this Heatran's already taking a lot of damage, so it's going to go down to Earthquake, even if it's Shuckaberry, it looks like. So, like, the game plan's already being set here. It's actually not going to break the sub. Ooh. And that shouldn't really change much. I guess it could change, like, a few factors. How healthy, healthy was my Empoleon again? I'm pretty sure I was, like, near full. Yeah, it was like <laughs> full. <laughs> Actually, is this max HP and pulling? It is max HP and pulling, and unfortunately, doesn't hit 192 for maximum grassy terrain recover. But I'll keep Tapu Bulu around for one more turn because he would probably just go for either a Tailwind or a last ditch Sludge Bomb in the Tapu Bulu. So I'm just gonna go for the protect and ice beam. I want if this Naginata has like substitute or something could be scary, but as long as it's not substitute. We should be good. Flamethrower is going to come out into top of Bulu. Okay. And Earth Power going to target down my Empoleon. However, this doesn't really matter again. Getting rid of Naginato. And then I just have to break that substitute and prevent him from getting another one by clicking Scald a bunch of times. Going to get a special defense fall, unfortunately. Ice Beam is going to come out into the Naginato. Should pick up the knockout. Yep. And another Wood Hammer, I would imagine, breaks the sub on Heechan. And I just keep clicking Scald no matter what. I guess if it doesn't break the sub, like when Hammer doesn't break the sub, we could be in trouble. But it should be able to, I would imagine. So Wood Hammer coming out once again. And even then, like, in order to knock out Polyon, you're going to need, like, another Earth Power probably. And yeah, Heatran sub does fate here. So let's see what the Heatran's going to go for. Earth Power? Yep, just another Earth Power, which is perfect into my Empoleon, which isn't even going to pick up the knockout, and Scald's going to come out. Can this knockout? I don't think it will be. I think it will barely live. Oh, it actually does. Never doubt Empoleon. So Empoleon going to be clutching out this game. Like, Empoleon actually has a really solid matchup against uh, that kind of core, which is actually pretty cool, because this is the perfect time to use Empoleon, apparently. <laughs> but we're going to take a win. Very long game. I felt like I just have enough experience with that team where it's pretty easy to maneuver around. I have a pretty solid lead in Landis Farian plus Empoleon because I can always maneuver to my back Pokemon if I ha am having trouble. Rotating Intimidate is also really nice with Landis because my phone doesn't exactly have the best ways to handle Empoleon. So, really like that. We're going to find another game, but yeah. Uh, Empoleon putting in more work. Empoleon definitely putting in more work. I like that. I like that a lot. And... If we actually win the next game, we're in uh, 1700s, which would be really cool. So, can we get to 1700s? Can we get into 1700s is the question. So, let us see. Let us see. But anyway, yeah. Let me know if you like this team or not. Because I'm usually more known for showcasing Pokemon on VGC 18 Vector Battles. I do show off competitive stuff too. I show off competitive teams as well. And not saying this isn't a competitive team. But this is more like a fun showcase to show like what different Pokemon can do. Like, you know, they have potential on the right teams. They can fit. They can probably do well at high level. So definitely let me know what you think about seeing like Pokemon. Cool Pokemon like Empoleon, Sylveon. Because I think it's really fun. Charizard X too, which is kind of uncommon. But yeah, that's just me. I like to have fun when I'm at least playing Battle Spot. And then when I'm at tournaments, then I'll seriously grind. But this is how I usually consider teams. I look at all Pokemon no matter what. See what kind of roles and purposes they could have. Uh, yeah, because in 2014, I got inspiration from Ashton Cox, who used Salk. And that was like a big check to Kangaskhan at the time. Kangaskhan was such a threat that I think most teams needed answers to Kangaskhan and Sock was definitely a cool one. I, it was inspired uh, by Ashton and I took the idea and brought it to the World Championships. My first one and ended up qualify, qualifying through the last chance qualifiers. So I've been pretty cool with like flexible team choices and I'll always consider a Pokemon if it does fit on the team. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes. 
And I've used a lot of crazy stuff in the past. Well, not cra- not too crazy, but like I've had some a bit obscure ideas like time from time I brought I took I've taken risk before uh throughout tournaments throughout my VGC career. I brought you know, Clefairy to Madison, but Clefairy was actually decently common back then, but I think it was a really solid pick for back then. Uh, in 2015 Nats, I chose no steel type, not having a steel type. I was actually the only person in day two of U.S. Nationals who made it through who actually didn't have a steel type on his or her team. So that was, I don't know. I mean, I chose Clefairy once again with Azumarill over Heatran, which gave my Farofan matchup like, oh, that was awful. My Mega Gardevoir matchup was also terrible, but we don't talk about that. And then, let's see, I brought Mega Gengar, Terrakia, Whimsicott, which was more considered a gimmick team to the World Championship at that time. And yeah, it was still really fun in my opinion. I loved that team. I still think it was one of the best potential teams that could have done really well at Worlds that year. It just, I think it was just really solid. And I really did enjoy playing with it. And I think I was playing pretty well, even though I went 3-4 day 2, going 4-0 day 1, and then having, you know, 3-4 day 2. I guess that's, like, alright, but still. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, I think I'm just gonna cut it to the, gonna cut it to the next, uh, battle. So, we'll be right back for another game. Alright, finally found someone. Loser from South Korea, 1609. Oh, if, ooh, man, I haven't seen this team in forever. It was a battle spot double team, I know that, but... Man, I remember this team. Cartana, Gastrodon, Suicune, Aegis, Slash, Landis, Baron, and Charizard. Now, I can't assume items, but I do remember like just facing this team quite a few times on about spot doubles. Now, it's an interesting, interesting matchup. I don't like facing Suicune. Not one bit. <laughs> Not one bit. Uh, kind of wish we had like some kind of seed on Zapdos this time because... Living those heat waves from Charizard would actually be divine here, but yeah, this is gonna be an interesting one. I think I want to go Zapdos. Mm, I don't think Empoleon does well here. It really doesn't do well. I think Charizard Landers Top of Blue are the Pokemon that I want to bring. I think I'm gonna lead landers zapdos with charizard top of blue in the back i'm very scared of aegis slash like aegis slash is a very scary pokemon to deal with so if we win this we're in 1700s which would be pretty cool for like this is actually like the first few days of ultra sun and ultra moon which would be nice actually i think i'm still number one at this point maybe unless you know people other people have laddered and obviously people are laddering but at this point that i'm currently looking at top is 1680 so if i lose this i think i'm out of top or out of first so, Landers Cartana leads. Ooh, beautiful. So, my Intimidate goes first. That confirms it's not Scarf Landers. That's good to confirm. As the Landers is Intimidate, it's going to go after. So, it could be Choice Banded. Assault Vest is probably one of my key assumptions here that I'm assuming. Rock Slide is something that my opponent can click, though. And that's not a fun thing to face. Uh... Tailwind is very safe here. I like Tailwind and Protect here. Because I do want to scout for like a potential Bloom Doom from the Cartana, which it definitely could be. Could be Z-Move Landers as well. Could be like Tectonic Rage. I think this is the safest play no matter what. Leaf Blade, Scarf. Uh, no, it's not Scarf. <laughs> we can't confirm that actually right now. So it's Leaf Blade and Rock Slide. It's... Please don't flinch. Nice. Okay. Nice. Zapdos, you're putting in work. You're putting in massive, beautiful work here. So I don't know if Cartana would protect. Maybe it doesn't carry protect. Could be an Assault Vest set. I'm going to double in with Tectonic Rage plus Thunderbolt. Because even though Cartana is like an easy Pokemon to get rid for Charizard. Like, Cartana's a threat to my Tapu Bulu. If I can get rid of threats to Tapu Bulu, I can handle the Landers better, in my opinion. I also want to Toxic in later. And there's a high chance that Landers could switch out too. So I'd rather go for Tectonic Rage plus Thunderbolt. And get some nice chip damage. I think it would be Z move Aegis Slash. So it could be Scarf Cartana based on team composition. Uh, Cartana protects. A bit unfortunate for me. I could have got a Toxic off there potentially. I am going to go for Tectonic Rage. It is going to go through Protect. It's not really going to do too much. 
But nothing really wants to come into like Earthquake plus Thunderbolt. Like nothing on my opponent's team really appreciates that. And I'll have my Citrus Berry for Zapdos. So if I am getting hit by a Rock Slide, that's okay here. Because how much is Tectonic Rage going to do? Should do a solid amount still. 20%. Nah, <laughs> that's not 20%. Thunderbolt into the Protect. I wish I had Heat Wave here. Heat Wave would have actually helped. Knock off into the Zapdos slot. Getting rid of my Citrus Berry. Okay. So I should be able to live one more Rock Slide. So Thunderbolt plus Earthquake seems very safe here. If my opponent brought Gastron, but I don't really see a point of bringing Gastron. When I have Tapu Bulu. I kind of would eliminate Gastron for a factor. I mean, it's potentially he could have it. But I feel like Suicune, Aegis Slash, and Charizard would be the combination Pokemon he would have in the back. So I'll go for the Knockout Kartana right here. As, yeah, he is going to stay in, so I'm going to be able to knock out Cartana. Great, that helps my, that helps my Tapu Bulu, which is really helpful. As Earthquake does a good amount, Thunderbolt should be able to pick up a knockout since it's not Assault Vest Cartana. As Thunderbolt does knock out the Cartana, barely didn't, or, <laughs> yeah, it like went down so slowly. The Rock Slide is going to come out, Zapdos should be able to survive. Yep. And I'll be able to roost off the damage. The problem is he could predict the roost and go for Earthquake, I guess. That's definitely potential. I could also switch out into Tapu Bulu, which would be safe. But the problem is I think Charizard might want to come in here. It might be like Suicune. Yeah, it's Suicune, actually. So I don't mind that too much. Uh, How many turns of Tailwind I have left, though? I think I only have this last one. Yeah. So I'm going to go for a Roost here. I Suicune's don't really carry Protect, so I kind of doubt he would Earthquake. And to cover the Earthquake play, I go in the top of Bulu. He might Scald or Ice Beam the Lander slot, which would be fine here, I think. But I get to Preserve Intimidate. I preserve my main answer to... Well, it's not my main answer, but it's a good answer to Charizard. So get this nice, nice grassy terrain. Although he could be Tectonic Rage, so we still haven't seen a, a Z-move yet. Could have been Bloomed in front of Cartana still. You didn't see an item on that slot either. As, yeah, it's just a rock slide. Okay. Okay. I am good with that. Ah, crit on top of Bulu. Okay, but he only goes for a Tailwind. If it was like Ice Beamed in, I could have been actually in a troublesome position. But since it's just rock slide, we're good. And I love how Zapdos gets a little bit of grassy terrain afterward. So now I can go for a Tailwind right here. A Tailwind's very safe. And I will go for the Wood Hammer, I feel like, into Landers. Because if I can knock out that Landers, great position for me. Great position. Because then I feel like my Charizard would just be able to win, to be honest. I could n try to knock out Suicune, but of course Charizard could switch in. Which is still risky, in my opinion. He might just double in the Zapdos. Because switching the Thunderbolt is not the ideal thing for Suicune. As my opponent's just going to stay in. Rock Slide, unfortunately, misses my Zapdos. And his top of Blue is going to take it. And I should be able to live in Ice Beam because of how bulky I am. Uh, Ice Beam is actually going to go into Zapdos. So that Ice Beam, that Rocks I missed was huge. As Tailwind will be set up from my Zapdos here. And Wood Hammer into the Landers. Able to pick up the Knockout. It's clean Knockout. Beautiful. So that's really, really nice for me. And Charizard should be my opponent's last Pokemon. I'm already considering this endgame, and it's looking really good for me. Yep, Charizard's going to come out here. My play is to always go for Toxic into the Suicune, which might seem like a weird play, but trust me, and protect Tapu Bulu. I'm going to sack Zapdos here, get in Lander so I can Rock Slide, knock out the Charizard potentially. And uh, Horn Leech the uh, Suicune. Oh, it's Charizard X. That changes things. Because I gave him Grassy Terrain too. Oh, this changes things. So much. So I'm going to protect Tapu Bulu. We might see Fire Punch into the Tapu Bulu. Dragon Ends. Oh, that's not good. I wonder if the Suicune targeted into the Tapu Bulu or not. I think you would. Toxic going to go out into the Suicune, though. So that Suicune's now on a timer, a nice, nice timer, as Ice Beam is going to come out and target down the top of Blue Slot, as I figured. So, yeah, still not the best of turns, to be honest, because this Charizard is boosted now. This Charizard is boosted. So I'm going to go for Toxic right here into his Charizard and a Horn Leech, I feel like, because... One, if I could potentially knock out the Suicune right here if I outspeed. Flare Blitz is going to come out and target down Tapu Bulu. Yeah, that's fine. 
So I should be able to get a Toxic off in the Charizard, and then I could potentially stall it out. However, it's not really looking that great here. Toxic into the Charizard, so that boy is on the timer as well. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And Ice Beam. So, Ice Beam's gonna come out. I could have Roosted. Roost might have been the better play, to be honest. Actually, I think Roost might have been the better play. So, unfortunately, you're gonna go down there and... Yeah, this is still not looking too solid right here for me. This is still not looking very solid for me right now, though. I'll go out into my Charizard right here, and I'll go out in my Landorus, of course, because I'm forced to. So, I feel like you would protect the Charizard and go for, like... Ice Beam and a Landorus. I could also see Tailwind. I feel like Tailwind would be a very solid play for my opponent right here. I'm just not sure. Yeah, this is my last turn of Tailwind. This is also the last turn of Grassy Terrain, which is interesting to note here. I don't think you should attack with Charizard. I feel like you either Ice Beam with the Suicune, or you go for a Tailwind here. Rockside can give me the chance to flinch, yet I'm going to Protect in Dragon Dance. I don't think you should attack with Charizard. You might, though. Uh, this is problematic. Yeah, but you, you, you protect with Charizard. Okay, I catch him. Nice. That's actually a really huge catch, too. So I am able to get the Dragon Dance up, which is absolutely huge here. And what does we can do? Tailwind? Yes. Okay. So Rockside would have been the correct play because, one, I get a bit of chip on the Suicune. And also the fact I don't know Dragon Claw will be able to knock out the Charizard at this point in the game. Especially, maybe after Poison and then another Chip. Yeah, I think that's the play I have to go for, basically. He's at neutral, which is good. Unfortunately, I can't Mega Evolve because Mega Evolving will cost me. So I'll go for a Rock Slide here. I'll go for a Rock Slide and Dragon Claw. Actually, no, I should have Earthquaked. Dragon Claw going to come out in the Charizard. That does so much. Ice Beam going to come out into Landorus. Yep. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. I still think I lose to Scald, potentially. Dragon Claw does pick up the knockout with the toxic damage, which is what I wanted. And I think it comes down to whether I get double protect or not. Yeah, I think it comes down to whether I get a double protect or not. Because I don't think I outspeed the Suicune. Because Suicune went before my Charizard. And Charizard's not going to gain a speed boost. So I'm going to have to go for a double protect here. I think I did play this well enough. But maybe I should have went for the double of Lando. I was just worried about a double up in the Charizard. But if the du Yeah. Should have went for the double up in with Charizard. So protect here with my Charizard on the Scald. Yep. And I'm going to go for the double. Of course, he was the berry, too. Oh, the poison is really racking up here. Is that citrus or is that a 50%? That is 50%. Which, you know, it still comes down to double protect. If I get it, which is 33% chance, I will be able to knock it out with Dragon Claw on the following turn, I would feel like. But we don't get it. Well, if we live to Skull, but I don't think we are. That's going to be a good game. So, really good game to my opponent. I feel like my opponent did play well. <sighs> I guess, I guess one, I probably should have Tectonic Rage to Cartana, but I didn't know it's set. If, if Tectonic Rage, if it was like a Solvest Cartana or Scarf, it couldn't protect. So Tectonic Rage was a very safe play and Thunderbolt into the Cartana. Unfortunately, it revealed that it did carry protect. So unfortunately, I wasted a turn of Tailwind right there and took extra damage. Maybe there were some other things I could have done better, like going for Rockside, for instance, with my Landers, because if I got the flinch on Suicune, with the Rock Slide, I could have potentially, potentially prevented Tailwind. And I think that would have just sealed up the game for me. To be honest. Yeah, there were a lot of things that could have been done. And maybe like another turn I could have roosted instead of went going for the Toxic in the Charizard. Because I would have been able to get Tailwind up. But then again, the Suicune would have been able to get Tailwind up. So that's why I kind of want Toxic. Because I'm like, oh, I think Suicune's going to be able to get Tailwind up no matter what I do. So I feel like the best play overall is just to go for the... Uh, 
go for the toxic in the Charizard and maybe I can weaken it to a point where I can get my own Charizard to set up correctly or maybe what I could have done better was Thunderbolt to the uh, Suicune instead because I don't know how much Thunderbolt would have done I would imagine around at least 40 maybe to 60 and it would have proc its berry toxic yeah I mean then maybe Charizard X's Dragon Claw could have been able to pick up the knockout on the Suicune it's still like a coin toss to be honest I don't actually know like what uh, if that would have worked, but that was a good game to my opponent. Unfortunately gonna be dropping to I think 1670 or something But thank you all for tuning in and watching today's episode of VGC 2018 back to the I think that was a really intense battle. That was a really intense battle, but Hope you enjoyed give it a like down below if you did enjoy as well as feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts and Feel free to recommend this video to anyone you think who would enjoy this video as always You can check out the description down below for my social medias my twitch channel Which I highly recommend following for more VGC stuff as well as my side series on the channel And if you missed a previous episode You can go check it out down below in the description as well as the playlist if you have missed any previous episodes of VGC 2018 back to back back to back battles stumbled on my own <laughs> sayings but yep you can do that but otherwise i hope you have a good day people i will catch you around in another video